Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Clive Davis, and I run EPA's Safer Choice program. I'll be your moderator. Uh, next slide, please. So before we begin the webinar and introduce our speakers, I'd like to briefly go over a little house, housekeeping. Um, first of all, I've got a disclaimer. Uh, this webinar is for informational purchase, uh, purposes. There are non-federal entities, people presenting and their, and their views are their own and not representative of the views of EPA necessarily. EPA does not endorse any non-federal entity that is presenting, nor their products, services, or enterprises. EPA is not responsible for the content of non-federal presenters. For, co for closed captioning of today's discussion, please select the closed captioning icon at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you've got any issues um, making Zoom work for you, please email Emma Jackman. Um, her email is on the screen. Um, all participants are going to be in listen-only mode, um, but we're interested in your questions, so please submit your questions for discussion into the Q&A feature. Um, we've planned to have time at the end for question and answers. Uh, today's session is going to be recorded uh, for future posting. And at this point, I have the pleasure of turning it over to Jenny Romer. Jenny is EPA's Deputy Assistant Administrator for Pollution Prevention. She's going to give us broad context for activities under the Pollution Prevention Program and tee things up for the presentations on Safer Choice. Jenny? Thank you, Clive. And thanks to all of our speakers and to all of you for taking the time out of your busy day to join us today. I'm your host, EPA's first Deputy Assistant Administrator for Pollution Prevention, and this is our sixth webinar in our Pollution Prevention, or P2 in Action webinar series, which has highlighted some of the great work that folks are doing around the country to prevent pollution in very practical, practical and very replicable ways. And it's fitting that we're having this webinar during P2 week. It's a celebration of all things pollution prevention. And pollution prevention or P2, which is also known as source reduction, is all about reducing, eliminating, or preventing pollution before it's created. EPA has supported pollution prevention activities for a long time. And our work has been reinvigorated under the Biden-Harris administration. And our P2 grants program was really supercharged by additional funds provided under the bipartisan infrastructure law. So every day, my colleagues and I are working on preventing pollution and we're especially focused on making sure that cleaning products that we use don't harm people or the environment. Our Safer Choice program helps people find cleaning and other products made with safer ingredients, such as products that don't contain chemicals like PFAS. This program is well established uh, with over 350 partner manufacturers, about 1800 certified products and over 80% of, of customers interested in, are use, interested in using our label to inform their purchasing decisions once they've heard about the label. And we're working to make the program even better to make sure that people have access to products with safer ingredients uh, when they're shopping online, in big stores, and in dollar stores. We recently strengthened the program sustainable packaging requirements. Uh, products with the Safer Choice label will either have reusable packaging or be made with recyclable materials and made of post-consumer recycled content. The packaging also won't be able to con contain any in intentionally added PFAS. Yesterday, in honor of P2 Week, EPA also announced a new outdoor use Safer Choice label. So manufacturers uh, of products used outdoors, like grill, deck, and boat cleaners, will now have to be able to show that their products meet additional criteria to help protect the environment, particularly in our waterways. So these updates were made possible with feedback from our strong stakeholder community. And at its core, 
Safer Choice is a partnership program. And today's webinar will focus on how that program works in action, in partnership with a broad range of stakeholders to prevent pollution through products with safer ingredients. So I'm excited to have speakers from a company that makes Safer Choice certified products, a nonprofit organization that advocates for the use of safer products, and a P2 grantee working to increase access to certified products in underserved communities, all here with us today. So they will discuss how what they do connects with EPA's work to increase access to products with safer ingredients and how P2 practitioners can help. So again, thanks so much for joining us today. And I'll now I'll turn the program back over to you, Clive. Thanks so much, Jenny. So thanks for setting the stage. Um, thanks for making the connection between Safer Choice and P2 practitioners. I'd like to take a moment now to introduce our panelists. Um, if all panelists could please turn their cameras on. Um, Erin Kirk is part of the Safer Choice team at EPA. She focuses on Safer Choice outreach efforts, including uh, the Safer Choice Partner of the Year Awards and EPA's Pollution Prevention Grant Program. Liz Hitchcock directs Toxic Free, Free Futures Federal Policy Program Prior to its integration with TFF, Liz led Safer Chemicals Healthy Families legislative team to reform the Toxic Substances Control Act. And as U.S. PERG's public health advocate, she led campaigns on issues like chemical policy reform and food safety. Diana Restrepo is the Sales and Operations Director for Commercial and National Accounts at ECOS. She works to make Safer Choice certified cleaners for home and business use available and accessible. She's all, she also educates consumers on human and environmental health benefits of safer chemistry. Dr. Rebecca Bascom is a lung doctor and professor of medicine and public health scientist sciences at uh, Penn State uh, University College of Medicine. Uh, she's a P2 grantee and works in multi-stakeholder groups to advance individual and community health. Erin, you're up first and I'll pass it to you now. Thank you so much, Clive, for that introduction, and hello, everyone. Uh, today, my presentation will cover some background on the Safer Choice program and opportunities for pollution prevention. Next slide, please. So as many of you are probably aware, it is often more cost effective to prevent pollution from being created at its source than to pay for control, treatment, and disposal of waste products. When less pollution is created, there are fewer impacts to human health and the environment, which is why we're focusing this webinar today on products that use safer chemistry. Consumer and institutional and industrial, or INI, demand is an important driver for shifting the marketplace towards safer chemicals and in products. Increasing demand for products with safer, chemi uh, safer chemical ingredients affects the entire supply chain. Retailers and distributors will want to offer more of these products, causing manufacturers to meet that demand. As product manufacturers move towards making products with safer ingredients, chemical manufacturers will need to meet that demand by developing safer chemistries. And as those safer chemistries become more available and adopted in the marketplace, that trickles back through the value chain and protects health of the consumers and the environment. Next slide, please. So how does EPA encourage safer chemistry and products? By certifying products through the Safer Choice program. Safer Choice is a voluntary program that is designed to make it easier for people to identify cleaning and other products with safer ingredients. We certify products that meet EPA's high standards for ingredient safety, performance, and packaging. There are nearly 2,000 certified products that are currently available. Next slide. Sa the Safer Choice label is your guide to finding cleaning and other products made with safer ingredients for both people and the planet. You can find the Safer Choice label on products that meet EPA's criteria. And the label facilitates rapid decision making, so consumers and purchasers can see the label on a product and instantly feel confident that these products have met high standards. 
Survey data show that over 80% of consumers are interested in using the label to inform their purchasing decisions, and those numbers are even higher for parents, millennials, and Gen Z. Next slide. So ultimately, a safer choice is all about safer chemistry. We'll only certify products with the safest possible ingredients. Our review goes beyond established lists of bad actor chemicals and makes sure that we avoid regret regrettable chemical substitutions. We do this with our comprehensive review that's grounded in decades of EPA experience and expert judgment from our scientists. Finally, we work with companies to help find safer alternatives for their products. Over the years, we've helped a lot of companies reformulate their products to use safer ingredients and meet our criteria. Next. So in addition to the consumer facing safer choice label, which represents products that we may use to clean our homes, EPA offers alternate versions of the label for products used in INI applications, such as schools, offices, and healthcare settings. We also have a label for products that have been certified fragrance-free. And then I also want to mention our Design for the Environment, or DFE logo, which can be found on disinfectants and sanitizers. The same criteria used in the Safer Choice program is applied to products that have the DFE logo, um, but these products have also undergone registration with the EPA's Office of Pesticide Programs. Um, so we have some exciting news. As Jenny mentioned yesterday, we announced a new alternate version of the label for products intended for outdoor uses. Uh, products with outdoor uses enter the environment directly, can bypass sewage treatment, and impact fish and aquatic life. EPA's new outdoor use label, which is an add-on to the well-established Safer Choice and DFE logos, will help people find outdoor products that protect their local environment and also incentivize companies to prevent pollution up the value chain. Next slide. Here is a list of the types of products certified by Safer Choice, including various cleaning products and products used outdoors, most cleaning activities that you might take part in will have options with the Safer Choice label. Next. Safer Choice certified products can be found at a variety of stores, including major retailers and smaller independent stores. Uh, we acknowledge that these products may not be everywhere, but EPA is working to increase availability. And with nearly 2,000 certified products, there are also products available at several price points. Next slide, please. Environmental justice is a priority for EPA. For Safer Choice, we've been thinking about it in terms of both increasing education about the Safer Choice label and increasing access to Safer Choice certified products in underserved communities. Through EPA's Pollution Prevention, or P2 grant program, we offer environmental justice grants for states and tribes to assist businesses in improving human health and the environment in underserved communities. There are two different P2 environmental justice grant programs, but I'd like to highlight the program that focuses on increasing access to safer and more sustainable products. There are several grantees that are currently focusing their efforts on increasing access to Safer Choice certified products. And uh, the next application cycle will likely open in early 2025. There are no matching funds required for these grants. Next slide, please. I just wanted to flag in the chat. So several people aren't able to, to see the slides. So there might be an update we can do to that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just switching gears really quickly, I do want to make you aware of some of the helpful Safer Choice resources. Um, for the sake of time, I'm only going to go through a few of these, but there is a slide with all of these links at the end of the presentation that will be made available. Uh, next slide, please. You can search the list of Safer Choice certified products on EPA's website. The list is updated regularly. 
Um, this is not a shopping tool, but instead it's a great resource to learn more about the program or check to see if your favorite brands have any certified products. There are a few different filters you can use to search for exactly what you're looking for. And I should also flag that we have a similar product search page for DFE certified products. That link will also be available at the end of this presentation. Next slide. EPA developed the Safer Choice Media Kit to help partners and stakeholders communicate about safer choice. The Media Kit includes a variety of resources, including messaging about the program, videos and graphics, social media content, and more. These resources are ready to use and available for download from our website, and we definitely encourage folks to use these resources or also take them and create your own content to share. Next slide. We also have web pages and resources from the Media Kit available in Spanish, and we are working to increase our Spanish resources available. Next slide. So to wrap it up, I'm recycling this slide from the beginning of the presentation to revisit the opportunities for pollution prevention along the value chain. As we discussed, consumer and purchaser demand is an important driver for shifting the marketplace towards safer chemicals in products. We can make it easier for purchasers to identify products with safer chemicals by having the safer choice label on the front of the product. There are also opportunities to educate folks on what the safer choice label means and encourage them to purchase or use safer choice certified products. Retailers and distributors will respond to their customers and will want to offer more of these products. This presents a great opportunity for a retailer sustainability strategy or a P2 plan. They can measure their progress just by the amount of Safer Choice certified products that they carry. As product manufacturers move towards using safer ingredients, they will incentivize chemical manufacturers to meet that demand by developing safer chemistries or source reduction strategies. Through these efforts, manufacturers can improve worker safety and potentially decrease liabilities. And then chemical manufacturers will meet demands through innovation and advancing sustainability. Next slide. So we encourage you all to engage with Safer Choice on social media. You can follow our Facebook page, like or reshare our posts. Um, if you ever want to post about Safer Choice on your own, please use our hashtag EPA Safer Choice. Next slide. So here is a list of some of our web pages. And again, a recording of this webinar will be made available so you can view these resources again. Next. If you have any questions about Safer Choice, please feel free to reach out to us at this email, saferchoice.epa.gov at any time. Um, we welcome questions and thank you so much, everyone. With that, I will pass it over to Liz Hitchcock from Toxic Free Future. Thanks, Erin, and um, thank you to EPA for inviting me to participate in this um, Pollution Prevention in Action webinar on Safer Choice. Um, as Erin said, I'm Liz Hitchcock, and I direct the Federal Policy Program for Toxic Free Future. Uh, we're honored to be invited and always happy to talk about the Safer Choice Program. Next slide, please. First, I'll tell you a little bit about Toxic Free Future. Uh, we work to create a healthier tomorrow by fostering the use of safer chemicals, products, and practices. Our work comes down to four programs, original scientific research, for example, testing food packaging and textiles for the presence of PFAS chemicals, um, policy advocacy in Washington State and in Washington, D.C., and our Mind the Store program works to move retailers toward putting safer products on their shelves. I've been asked to discuss Toxic Free Futures work to educate consumers and facility purchasers about safer alternatives for cleaning and disinfecting. So next slide, please. First, I wanna talk about who are these consumers? Whether we're shopping online or in person, we're all consumers. Uh, consumers read reports from TFF, I hope, and others and increasingly demand safer products to help 
them protect their families from dangerous chemicals. We've heard from new parents who stay up nights researching how to avoid toxic chemicals as, uh, as they work to purchase the safest products to use around their children. Next slide, please. Our organizing director wrote this blog post after he told us in a staff meeting after his first child was born that, quote, every day is laundry day, uh, which has him looking for safe, the safer choice label to guide what has become one of his biggest purchases. Next slide, please. Expanding out, we can recognize that the term consumers can mean more audiences than that. Next slide, please. At the beginning of my career, I had a job as an office manager that put me in charge of keeping 30 people who worked out of our office in notepads, pens, vacuum cleaner bags, copy machine toner and paper, and for a little blast from the past, typewriter ribbons. Um, in the school district where my nephew teaches, there's a purchasing officer who's responsible for obtaining the materials that are necessary for the Albany City Schools from chalk to their cleaning supplies. State and local governments look to safer choice as they move to protect workers from toxic exposures. And these include the city of Sacramento, King County, Washington, the District of Columbia, the state of Maryland and uh, New York State. Next slide, please. One of the biggest consumers, the federal government, the largest purchaser of goods and services in the world, took steps forward last April to require that the cleaning supplies and hand soaps used by contractors at more than 1,500 U.S. government-owned buildings meet the specs of Safer Choice or similar certifications within five years. We're working to make sure that the U.S. military, with more than 2.3 billion square feet of building space under its management, is soon required to do something similar. Next slide, please. Let's talk a little bit about the problem with cleaning products. Most products are designed for function without attention to chemical hazards or even knowledge of the chemicals that they contain. We're concerned about the chemicals that are found in cleaning products because of the individual uses in our homes and in institutional settings like our kids' schools, government office buildings like City Hall and the EPA, and the barracks on military bases for just a few examples. PFAS and other hazardous chemicals are found in a range of cleaning products. Many unnecessarily threaten human health and the environment. Everyday cleaning products like glass cleaners, floor cleaners, and finishes may release hundreds of chemicals associated with neurotoxicity and harm to the respiratory and reproductive systems. Chemicals in cleaning products contaminate indoor air two to five times more than outdoor air, possibly as high as 10 times more. Some products emit toxic chemicals for days, weeks, and even months. Next slide, please. Chemicals escape products and enter our homes and our environment through several different pathways. In Toxic Free Futures study, for example, we had samples of breast milk from 50 women in the Seattle area tested for four different suites of toxic chemicals, including PFAS, organophosphate plasticizers and flame retardants, Quaternary ammonium compounds, also called quats, um, brominated flame retardants. And these chemicals are associated with a wide range of health impacts, including cancer, harm to brain development, and hormone disruption. Long story short, all 50 breast milk samples that we tested contained all four types of chemicals. Breast milk is considered the best food for babies, and our colleagues in the medical field encourage breastfeeding when it's possible because of all of its benefits to the mother and child. But toxic chemicals used in products can leave those products and enter breast milk, impacting babies at a critical developmental stage. Scientific studies like Toxic Free Futures breast milk study are just one of the ways that we reach out to con inform consumers about making safer choices in the marketplace. One of the premier tools we use is our retailer report card. And uh, I've just been told the 2024 edition will be published late next month. Next slide, please. The goal of Toxic Free Futures retailer report card is to foster competition between retailers and drive a race to the top, driving market transformation towards safer chemicals, products, and packaging. Next slide, please. 
Over the years, we've seen it working. Retailers have improved year over year. 11 retailers that we graded for the first time in 2016 had an average grade of D+, but improved to an average grade of B- minus when we evaluated them five years later. Of 43 previously graded retailers, nearly 70% were found to have improved since their first score in the retailer report card as of our last retailer report card. Next slide, please. We've made some changes over the past 10 years, including a greater focus on safer solutions and on chemical classes and plastic supply concern. We've consistently looked at certifications by Safer Choice for which we've awarded points to a retailer when a retailer's safer chemicals policy states an explicit preference for use of safer alternatives in private label or brand name products, packaging or operations, and states a preference for chemicals that meet EPA safer choice criteria. Next slide, please. Our 2024 report card organizes evaluations against the rubric for essential elements for a safer marketplace. First, what is the commitment that the retailer has made to move to safer chemicals and materials through its corporate chemicals policy, participation in the chemical footprint project, external collaboration, and support of public policies? Next slide, please. Next, what does the retailer know about hazardous chemicals and plastics in the products and packaging on their shelves, and what are they telling consumers about it? Next slide, please. We look at the scope of hazardous chemicals and plastics that a retailer currently prohibits and its progress in reducing and eliminating high priority chemicals, chemical classes, and plastics of high concern. Next slide, please. To pause for a minute on the ban the bad criteria, we put the focus on hazard prevention and award points to retailers that don't allow carcinogens, mutagens, reproductive toxicants, or CMRs, if you like the acronyms, uh, persistent bioaccumulative and toxic materials, or PBTs, or endocrine disruptors. And to avoid regrettable substitutes, we also encourage a class-based approach rather than choosing among thousands of chemicals that share similar hazards. We applaud Safer Choice for a standard that does not allow similar chemicals in the products that they certify. Next slide, please. And lastly, how is the retailer's implementation of safer solutions going? Are they making financial investments in them? And what steps are they taking to ensure that suppliers transition to safer chemicals and products? Next slide, please. If you look at the full picture, the goal is to move from a retailer's commitment to get dangerous chemicals off store shelves to a practice of safer chemicals and products on those very same shelves. Next slide, please. Again, I thank you for this opportunity and I'll be happy to take questions in the Q&A. And now I'd like to turn it over to Diana Restrepo at ECOS. Thank you, Liz. We appreciate the opportunity to be here today to discuss from a manufacturer's perspective how Safer Choice allows us to differentiate our products in the marketplace and our efforts to improve environmental justice through safer chemistry. As mentioned, I represent ECOS. We are a manufacturer of plant power cleaners for home and business use. Since 1967, our mission has been to protect the health and wellness of people, pets, and the planet by creating the most authentic, sustainable, and affordable cleaning products for all. We make our products in four climate positive manufacturing facilities that are water neutral, carbon neutral, and zero waste platinum certified. We are clean chemistry innovators, consistently developing safer and sustainable cleaning products. We are proud to be a seven time Safer Choice Partner of the Year. Next slide, please. Our strong partnership with Safer Choice supports our commitment to our customers of ingredient transparency and safer chemistry. Currently, we have over 120 Safer Choice certified products. We often get questions from community members during our outreach events as to how they can identify if a product has safer chemistry for their use. The Safer Choice logo is always the answer, as this is a simple yet effective way for them to remember when selecting items from the shelves at their local stores. 
we proudly display the Safer Trace logo in front of PAC. At Ecos, the majority of our product portfolio is Safer Trace certified, with innovation always in the horizon. Because we believe education to our communities is key, we have developed a dedicated page on our website, available in English and Spanish, also accessible through mobile devices, to explain the benefits and the requirements of the Safer Trace program for us manufacturers to participate in. We also develop fun and interactive social media activations on the certification. Accessibility and affordability is important so that people from all communities can find safer, safer trace certified products in retailers close to their homes. At Ecos, we are proud to have products available in 81,000 stores across 60 countries, and we continue to develop new national and regional retailer partnerships. We believe that Safer Choice brings trust and confidence to both the retailer partners and consumers due to its rigorous testing of ingredient safety, performance, as well as increased commitments to recyclability and reduction of waste. Next slide, please. At the core of what we do at Ecos is the focus on of human and planetary health. We believe that education and collaboration are a big piece of ensuring that all types of communities and age groups have access to the information to make safer, healthier choices. This is why over the years, we have developed partnerships with schools, universities, children museums, nonprofit organizations, and trade associations. We have a green chemistry lesson program that has been adapted for all levels from kindergarten to university. We believe in creating the green chemists of the future, helping shape mindsets and proposing challenges on innovation and continuous improvement. Through collaboration with nonprofits like Think What's, Pollution Prevention Research Center, Advocates for Community Wellness, American Cancer Society, and more, we have been able to teach parents, grandparents, children, caregivers, cancer survivors, students, workers, and cleaning service providers the importance of safer chemistry and how the Safer Trees program brings and validation on their shopping choices. These, in effect, also have a positive impact into their health and the environment. To the left, you can see some images of our community educational activities. On the top, we have a program with students at Fifth Ward Elementary School in Reserve, Louisiana. Right below, we work with the Think Watts Foundation connecting with teenagers and community members in Watts, California. And lastly, our recent summer lesson at the Kids Bayshore Beach Camp. In all activities, we focus on breaking down the components of the chemistry of a cleaning product from the formulation, the benefits of safer chemistry, and how safer choice serves as a third-party certification to bring validation to the safety of the product for people and the planet. Now, I would like to introduce the next panelist, Dr. Rebecca Bascom from Penn State University. Thank you. Good afternoon, thank you so much for the opportunity to present at this webinar. My topic is making safer choices, and this is a pollution prevention research project that the EPA has funded and that uh, I am leading with some wonderful collaborators. Next slide, please. As you've just heard, the EPA's Safer Choice program is a way to aim for safer choice for workers through, through the Safer Choice label. Our project is to develop research and practical aimed for businesses and disadvantaged communities so that they can use safer and more sustainable cleaning products. And we are focused in the states of Pennsylvania and New York. Next. The topics I'll cover in the next few minutes are the why what and how of making safer choices, our university trade association team, the partnerships we are setting up across the value chain toward the end, to the end user. How do we find the communities? We'd like to tell you about the EJ screening tool that we've been using. 
and our frameworks, the implementation science frameworks and positive deviance, and then uh, finish with goals and next steps. Next slide, please. So why are we doing this? We'll be working with communities already burdened in, by the current and past pollution, high pollution levels, and also increased rates of illness. We want to reduce pollution levels and not contribute to ongoing exposure wherever we can. And furthermore, we've come to learn that many people living in the low-income communities work as cleaning professionals, and so they are at risk from the use of, the, of toxic cleaning products, and they really stand to benefit from the transition to safer choice products. Next slide. The what is to use the safer choice label, as you've already heard about, and the how is to develop toolkits uh, with the goal of allowing people to know how to find and use the safer choice product. We've come to learn that this is needs to be done in multiple language languages as cleaning professionals have come from many language backgrounds and also many different organizations and settings. Next slide. Our university trade association team is something we're really very proud of, a multidisciplinary team from Penn State, um, the community health of uh, City University of New York, and then our trade association partner in ISSA that really has amazing connections across the cleaning industry, um, allowing us great potential reach. Next slide. So who are we seeking as partners? Uh, well, you've heard about the value chain, and that's really everybody from the manufacturing to distribution to people who are making the decisions, the purchasing officers, the purchasing decisions, um, and then to the various large organizations that are using cleaning products. Think how often nursing homes need to use cleaning uh, materials. And then also sports and, and uh, concert arenas, transportation hubs, multi-unit housing. All of these pe uh, people are very important as partners. Next slide. How do we find partners in disadvantaged communities, one of the priorities of this grant program? For that, we've been using the Environmental Protection Agency's EJ screening tool. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, it's really very flexible. It allows you to focus on exposures, as I'll show you, or health conditions, or other dimensions of disadvantage that might be of interest, such as life expectancy. Next slide. This slide shows you Two examples, the left is Pennsylvania, the right is New York City. On the left, we're looking at the distribution of particulate air pollution, um, a very important adverse health exposure. And you can see by the pink that in central Pennsylvania and over in the lower right-hand corner of Philadelphia, there are high levels of exposure in some communities. Or if you want to look at a more respiratory hazard index, um, looking over New York City, again, look at the concentrations of areas uh, disproportionately affected uh, in, in the New York City area. Next slide. If you then want to look instead about a health outcome, the EJ screen also allows us to look at that. Um, on the left, we chose as an example the distribution of cancer in Pennsylvania, and you can see where the orange and red areas indicate high rates. Or if asthma, uh, something of particular interest to me as a lung doctor. Just next slide, please. Uh, next slide. This was the one I spoke about, about uh, the, where our nursing homes are in our community mapped that with, with exposure and disadvantage. The next slide looks um, is, is focusing on implementation science, which is the way you figure out a strategy to improve best practice adoption in community settings, real world settings and businesses. And it's the frameworks that help you see barriers and facilitators. Um, so let's look at the next slide. This is really, I've, I've found this a very exciting framework. Um, and you can see the circle starts with exploration. So anytime you're trying to figure out how to do something better, you start with exploration for EPIS, then preparation, then implementation and sustainment. So an earlier speaker spoke about who the purchasing agent was. And that could be a person either in the outer context in the C-suite or it could be something at someone in the front line and understanding where that person is can be very important. 
And then you can also see in the center on the red boxes, these are the bridging factors that get between outer and inner contexts and also where innovation occurs. It's a very flexible framework to look for key variables. Uh, and we're going to be using this, we already have in our project. Next slide. So the, one of the things we look for are barriers. This is an independent store in a community in which we're working. And I took a picture of the, all the cleaning products that are on the aisle. And look how overwhelming that would be if you had just a, a quick moment to make a decision. And we want to know how do people choose what cleaning products to use? And Heather Stuffy, who does uh, mixed methods, helps us in through focus groups uh, explore in detail how are those choices made and where are the barriers. Next slide. Barriers are also the sea of labels. I, I entered cleaning product label on the internet and look the, at what I got on the right. And also individual labels may have claims. And how do you, how does an individual or an organization navigate this sea of labels? And that's why the safer choice product label is so powerful potentially. Next slide. We also like to look for positive deviance. This is a great example. If you want to know who did the wheel, you look for the person who was successful, not the people that were struggling. And you find out how did they do it and, and go after that positive deviance. Next slide. What we've seen so far in our work is that ready, in an organization, readiness for change is essential. Innovate, innovation and innovators drive programs. And it really, the culture relates to this culture of innovation, sustainability, focus on health and safety, environment, and community reciprocity. reciprocity. I have two slides showing you an example of this. Next slide. Which we found the Philadelphia Eagles, one of our partners. If you look at what they say on their website, you'll see that these themes of interesting being interested in green energy and community reciprocity really ring through their mission statement. And if you look at the next slide, you'll see that their players are then go green. It goes along with their sports logo. But you can also see in the lower left-hand corner that the ISSA program, GBAC, which has stringent protocols for cleaning, including safe cleaning, is then part of what they have discovered and how they have innovated a multifaceted Go Green program that includes Safer Choice products. Next slide. So our project goal is to increase Safer Choice product trust in use in communities that need it. Next slide. And what we're now doing is continuing to learn from community stakeholders, finding the gaps and engaging in collaborative user-centered stakeholder design. Ask communities to tell us what they think the best ideas are. Next slide. And this is my final slide. So our toolkits in multiple languages for multiple settings um, will aim to have people know how to find and use the Safer Choice product. And that will be whether or not they're zipping into a local store to try to grab a product for their own personal use or if they're involved in training in a cleaning program. But most of all, we're interested in the individual in the lower right-hand corner who is heading to her cart to do cleaning. And we want to make sure that the Safer Choice product labels are there available for her to use so she can do her job and have um, less harm than was present previously with the less safe products. So over to you, Clive. So what I would like to do now is move us on to um, to the question and answer session. And um, actually, um, I would like to, if all the panelists could come and show themselves on screen, we really appreciate your presentations. Um, I, I would like to ask a few questions. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to ask our own Jenny Romer a question. Um, Jenny, so can you say more about how Safer Choice encourages innovative partnerships? Sure, thank you, Clive. Uh, and I would first just like, I know that we didn't get to get all the way through that previous presentation, but I will say that there's a lot of really, I think interesting and innovative work going on uh, with the P2 Grants Program and the last cycle of grantees there 
doing a lot of outreach uh, using tools like CGEST and more specialized mapping tools that the program has developed to really look at uh, at really places where there are a lot of impacts uh, to focus that outreach work. So wanted to acknowledge that even though we didn't get to uh, see the full presentation there. Uh, but and but Clive, thank you for your question um, about innovative partnerships. And we'll say that Safer Choice is always encouraging innovative partnerships to advance safer chemistry. Uh, and we highlight leaders in this space through our Partner of the Year Awards. And winners have, have uh, sold their Safer Choice certified products at low cost retailers, uh, in stores and in line, and online, including dollar stores. And their efforts really help ensure that products with safer ingredients are accessible to people uh, at more affordable prices. And other winners have been awarded for partnering with community-based organizations to deliver training and education to community members on safer cleaning practices, uh, including providing training materials in different languages, like it was mentioned earlier. And we have some exciting news to share. EPA is announcing the 2024 Partner of the Year winners next week. So look out for EPA's announcement there. And I think, again, it's another place where we can highlight uh, some of those innovative partnerships and, and encourage more. So thanks a lot. Thanks so much for that, Jenny. Um, Diana, there's a there's a question for you, um, and this is: Does Ecos collaborate with P two grantees? And if so, um, how does Ecos approach collaborations with these grantees? And have you got any stories about recent successes? Yes, great question. Uh, over the years, we have developed partnerships with P2 grantees, as well as other organizations that receive other type of EPA grants. We have been connected organically through introductions, industry events, and even LinkedIn. So that's a fun one. Most recently, we have worked with Pollution Prevention Research Center. We supported the wind samples and educational materials that they use in different events across Portland, Oregon. PPRC participated in community fairs, as well as connected individually um, with small businesses like cleaning providers and convenience stores located in disadvantaged communities where a second language is predominant. So they use our products among others to educate the people in the language, like Spanish, for example, on the benefits of safer chemistry and to think outside the box, especially because when it comes to cleaners, we oftentimes tend to use what our mothers or grandmothers taught us and, um, those options are now proven to sometimes be detrimental to uh, our health and that of the planet. So activities like these are important. And um, one part, one opportunity is very, that was very unique, and um, I'm so sad that Dr. Rebecca, um, her connection dropped off. It's actually with ISSA and Penn State University um, and the amazing project that they have put together. And this is just an example of how sharing information about available grants with stakeholders in the industry um, can lead to this impact generating projects. So a few years ago, I met with Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, who Dr. Rebecca mentioned, and I was telling him about this amazing grant and how um, universities could take advantage of it. So here we are, a connection was made and a wonderful uh, program is being developed. I personally work with the commercial segment. So uh, as he was mentioned, cleaning service providers are being exposed to cleaners for eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, and sometimes for the years of their working life. So they can mostly greatly benefit from understanding the benefits of incorporating safer chemistry into their operations. Thanks so much. That was that was a great answer, Diana. Um, I would like to ask this question that I think is directed at Liz. Um, so if folks are interested in a little more information on um, encouraging safer solutions and um, specifically what inspired Toxic Free Future to focus on this metric. And can you say more about how retailers are responding? Um, uh it's, it's it's a really good question. Um, we were prompted to focus on safer solutions in, in 
In part, uh, there's something that Aaron said at the beginning in the EPA presentation that um, that sparked this. We spend a lot of money as taxpayers, as ratepayers, as healthcare consumers um, on the impacts of our exposure uh, to toxic chemicals. When we use safer solutions at the outset, we don't have to spend that money at the end of the at the end of the pipeline. Um, so the so that to your question, the the other answer on retailers is that retailers have have responded very well. And again, um, I think in my presentation I talked about um, the seventy percent of retailers who had improved from the first time we evaluated them to uh, the report card we put out five years ago, retailers have contacted us looking for safer solutions because uh, they're, they're up close and personal with the consumers who are asking even more questions um, or ever more questions about the products that they're buying. Are there X chemical in this product. I heard, I read about this. Is that going to be found in this product? Will I be exposed to this? And retailers have responded to this by uh, by making efforts to use safer products. Um, and safer choice has been great in uh, just uh, uh, encouraging that that behavior and giving them a place to turn to. Yeah. Thank you, Liz. And. Um... Both retailers and their actions are so important to making those safe products available. Um, there's another question here um, that I think is, well, I know it's for Aaron because it's about safer choice. Um, could you say just a little more, Aaron, about how safer choice is working to advance environmental justice? Yeah, of course. That's a great question. Um... So I did mention in the presentation the P2 environmental justice grants. Um, we have been encouraging projects as part of that to focus on increasing access to safer choice certified products, along with other um, safer and more sustainable products in underserved communities. And again, there will be another round of funding available for that in 2025. Also, um, in previous years, we have hosted panel sessions at our Safer Choice Summit focused on environmental justice through increasing education and access to Safer Choice certified products. Uh, these were some really great opportunities to highlight the amazing work that's going on in this space, including by some of our previous Partner of the Year award winners. And um, also it was a great opportunity to highlight um, various opportunities for how partners and stakeholders can get involved in this work. So just to name a couple of things. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, let me just quickly say there are a few, a few questions that ask about the Safer Choice Standard. And I just want to say two things for just a few seconds. Um, first of all, all of the Safer, if you see a product that has the Safer Choice label on it, um, that means that it contains um, only chemicals that meet our safer choice standard. And that means that PFAS is not in those products, number one. Number two, um, our criteria um, require that the products have low concern for health across a number of endpoints, like Liz said, CMR, PBT, um, but also that we do structure activity relationships, for example, to ensure that even chemicals that haven't been evaluated or tested are not problematic when they're in these products. So health and environment. And we have a certification program where product manufacturers have to submit products. This is what Diana does, um, submits products through third parties that do an evaluation of those products. They send a dossier to us at EPA, we make the certification decisions. And then when those products meet our criteria, we allow them to carry the label. They get an audit every year and they are recertified once every three years. So it's, it's quite rigorous. Manufacturers go through a lot to bear the label. So with that, we have time for maybe two questions, but um, Diana, um, folks want to know, are, um, is Ecos working on providing products without plastic containers? Absolutely. So 
Plastic pollution and reduction of waste is something that we look at as we improve current packaging and we're formulating the products for the future. So some great examples are our liquidless laundry detergent sheets, our laundry detergent packs, which come in fully cardboard packaging, so no plastic bottles. And they're very lightweight, so we're also reducing the carbon in the supply chain. Lastly, we have our super new ultra concentrated liquid laundry detergent, which comes in an aluminum bottle. This is, this since it's ultra concentrated, it increases utility for the consumer, giving it se se 78 loads in a 16 ounce aluminum bottle. And the cool thing about aluminum is that it's infinitely recyclable. So it's easier to be picked up by the magnets at the sorting and recyclable centers. So uh, this is something that we're looking at to incorporate in future products as well. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Diana. Um, Dr. Bascom, um, what is the format of the toolkits? Um, are they printed materials? Are they videos? Folks would like to learn more about that. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we are we are still developing them and we are going to ask the people who are using them. We uh, Videos, I think, are, are great. Um, we, they allow translation into different languages. So you name it, we'll do it. Um, we're, when we have a when we have a proposed product our focus groups will tell us what they think that's what we mean about end user design thank you so much um we i'm going to ask may have liz depending on how long you take we may have time for two questions but liz how can p2 grantees collaborate with ngo programs that promote large scale change with retailers, cleaning service providers, or product manufacturers? Um, uh, I'm glad you asked that question because I, I saw that in the Q&A. Um, I, th I think there's a number of ways that we, we can collaborate and the, the P2 um, uh, grantees can certainly um, make sure uh, to let us know um, about your products and let us know um, about and really push to get them into the retailers that we're that we're evaluating uh, would be my my very short answer. Well, that... wonderful, wonderful answer as usual, Liz. So, unfortunately, everybody, that was our last question. We are at time. I do want to remind folks that um, recorded webinar will be posted on EPA's website. Mm -hmm along with recordings of the previous P2 in Action webinars. Um, so thanks so much everybody for being on with us. And Jenny, could you please close it out for us? Sure, thank you, Clive. Uh, we're out of time, but thanks to everyone for joining us today. Uh, it's really great to hear from all the incredible panelists about their exciting work. And by working together, we're increasing access to products with safer ingredients. Uh, and more broadly, uh, also be on the lookout for information on our National Pollution Prevention and Toxics Hybrid Conference coming in December, which will include experts from our grantees, representatives from industry and NGOs and state and federal partners. So look out for that. Thank you and take care. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, panelists. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>